Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Dr. Bernstein, I have to admit, I really appreciated the opportunity to visit with you in my office, um, uh, and, and, and thank you for taking the time to do so. There were a couple of items that we talked about there that I would suspect that we would disagree on, but I want to work my way through them with you here today. Um, inflation, specifically the, the high energy prices, I believe have negatively affected American families. I also believe that the Federal Reserve does not have the appropriate tools to fight this inflation because it is policy induced by President Biden's plans. Um, on President Biden's first day in office, with a stroke of a pen, he choked off the access to the Keystone XL pipeline and prohibited new oil and gas leases on public lands and waters. This sent a signal to the energy community, those people that invest in energy, uh, that the federal government would be diverting resources away from domestic energy production. Now, as a member of the, the, the CEA, uh, did you recommend that action that he uh, uh, shut down that Keystone Pipeline on that first day? Um, first, of all, Sorry. Uh, first of all, let me uh, very much agree that uh, meeting with you and talking about these issues uh, was uh, a pleasure. And uh, I, I hope that in that meeting, I underscored uh, the kind of dynamics that uh, the uh, CEA former uh, Republican chairs um, uh, referenced about my uh, proclivities to uh, work with uh, folks across the aisle, uh, and to uh, value inputs from a diverse set of views. That's a quote. Um, I think the uh, important points that I tried to stress with you were less about uh, Keystone and more about uh, crude production under President uh, Biden, which has been higher than any other oh, but, president but, but on the, record. The reason why I'm asking is because on that particular day, the president relies on advice from trusted advisors around him. I would have assumed that you would be one of those trusted advisors. So that's the reason why I asked, did you recommend to him that he shut down the Keystone XL pipeline? Uh, I am uh, always involved in policy processes, but I don't have uh, a readout from that precise uh, uh, incident. I will uh, point out that the Keystone pipeline was, was only 8% completed when the decision to cancel it was made. Um, and of course, that was merely uh, that not merely that was a pipeline to uh, transmit oil, not to uh, not to uh, produce more. Uh, and again, I think the key point here is that well, I, uh, at but, 11, but I, and I don't mean to be argumentative, but my question is simply: Did you recommend that he shut down the Keystone XL pipeline? And uh, my answer, Senator, was uh, as a member of the team, I was part of those conversations, uh, but I don't have uh, any uh, particular read out a recollection of uh, 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 that would answer that question in, 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 in the fulsome manner you're requesting. Well, then no, let me go on then, because I, I, in your role as the chair of the CEA, how would you advise the president to bring down inflation from a policy perspective? Okay, that's a great, that's a great question. And I would say one of the uh, answers is one I already referenced in discussions with uh, Senator Brown earlier, which is um, uh, the pandemic, uh, while not the sole cause of inflation, uh, was certainly uh, its uh, root cause. And um, uh, helping to um, uh, ameliorate the supply side constraints that have been such a, a key factor in putting upward pressure on inflation was something we took very seriously and continued to do so. Our supply side disruption task force got right to work helping to um, uh, bring down the, the log jam at the ports. And as I, as I mentioned earlier, goods price inflation has actually been zero or negative over the past five or six months. In terms of energy, which I know is so important to you and your state, there I think it's important to recognize that uh, uh, production of oil under President Biden, 11.6 million barrels uh, per day, is uh, highest under uh, any, uh, any president uh, thus far. Um, and that uh, the president just approved, as you know, the Willow Project, which will produ produce 180,000 barrels per day. Uh, we know that our, there are unused leases ready to be drilled and that our oil producers have been highly profitable. Fair right. enough to say that, uh, that uh, the cost of energy, the cost of fuel has driven inflation up? Uh, 
It's definitely uh, not uh, that simple. And in fact, in recent time, it's gone the other way. So in the, in the well, month of March- Actually, since President Biden's taken office, the price of gasoline on a per gallon basis is still about $1.30 per gallon higher than what it was when he took office. Uh, well, interestingly, it's about $1.35 below where it was in, uh, in the peak of June of last year when it when Well, it, when it, it, it has been higher up. under his administration, but from the beginning of his administration forward, based upon advice that he's received, we've seen energy prices go up. And not all of it, in fact, a lot of it occurred prior to Mr. Putin invading Ukraine. And so I, 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 the reason why I ask this is, is these are really important advisories. And the, the, the message that you and I had, the discussion that you and I had in my office the other day, was specific on the types of advice and the background that you would provide the president. And I, I, I'm, I know I'm over my time on this, but I just think it's really important that the committee hear the approach that you take in advising the president of the United States on economic issues of all sites. But I thank you for your time today, thank sir. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator Rounds. Uh, Senator Fetterman of Pennsylvania is recognized.